Good morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you. We're here. It's October, and it is Breast and Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Lady parts. Mm -hmm. Lady parts. <laughs> parts. Um, Woman parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, everybody parts. Unfortunately, we all have been touched by or know someone or some ones who have been touched by breast and ovarian cancer. So I'm very excited about the guests that we have with us today. Before we get into that, um, I know I'm smiling, but it's been really, really hard to watch the news the past mm -hmm. couple of days after what has happened in Las Vegas. So I wanted to just ask you guys if you're feeling this sort of general anxiety. I've never felt like this before. Um, I just feel... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I've been feeling anxiety as much as I've been feeling malaise. I mean, it's just so sad that we're now growing our own terrorists, that, that it's showing itself up like this, that all these beautiful people enjoying a beautiful event had their lives stolen from them as and a result of a self-centered moron. Well, I'm not, you know, <laughs> illness. I think it's illness. I think it's plotting. I think it's evil. You know I what? I'm getting tired grows. of the illness thing. I'm getting tired of when someone does something horrible, we say, well, he was mentally ill, so it was okay. Well, he, you was, know? he was mentally ill, but he also had access to powerful weapons mm -hmm. that our country seems to only celebrate. Right. It's sort of, nation, we are a nation of savages and brutes, and the fact that our government is unwilling to do anything about that is saddening and horrifying. So I'm experiencing sort of this, this uh, oh, the rage again, but it's becoming commonplace. Right. It takes such mm -hmm. energy to feel such anger. And if, if there's a mass shooting like this every month, every week, 35,000 gun deaths a year. Well, I said, mm -hmm. where's the next place? Mm -hmm. Well, but see, one of the things that I'm really going to hold fast to is that we don't uh, stop our lives because the anxiety said, there's so many people, I'm never leaving my house again. You know, I'm not going to travel. I forget Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. ah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not. I'm not letting him win. But you know, I, I. So my husband and daughter went to the movies Monday afternoon, and um, I found myself being nervous about them being right, in the movie exactly. theater. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with you. You know, we can't stop living. But then there I was. I was at work because they went in the afternoon. He, Eric took some time off from work to take Sadie to see a movie that wasn't going to be in the theaters much longer. They wanted to see it. I was, I texted him in the middle of the movie. I found some ridiculous excuse, you know, just to, to text him. <laughs> and that, that was me panicking while, at work because they were in the movie theater. But I can totally understand. I mean, mm -hmm. it does, it, it heightens our anxiety, Absolutely. certainly. But, yeah. My son in New York City lives across the street from the U.N., that, that makes me nervous. I texted him yesterday and I said, he was coming home from work late and I said, keep your eyes and ears open. And I wanted him to say back to me, oh mom, don't be ridiculous. And he wrote in capital letters, always, with five exclamation points. Mm. I mean, people are just... That's my daughter in Brooklyn. Right. My eight year old said last night that she will never go to a concert outside like that. Mm. How do you like that? Right, That's and how many awful. concerts well, outside did we have well, to go? It, well, it was the concerts inside, right? You know, the... Paris was a concert. Yeah, and but I was able to shield her from Manchester. that. Manchester. The news yeah. is she heard this in my mother's car. Uh, so right. I, I don't know how to educate her and protect her, but at the same time not freak her out. But she has to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. My 22-year-old 100-pound daughter in New York City, in Brooklyn, given the cat collars what for every day, every moment she's on the sidewalk. She's careful. She, I, I, I ordered her an umbrella, and she said, Mom, just get me a black one, because a red one will make me a target. That is a very sad it's, world. That it's a violent, we're awful, in. savage world, and mm -hmm. men have permission. Mm. What do you think mm -hmm. about this guy? I mean, he's been planning this for just so long, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You don't watch TV, or you don't watch like ABC, NBC, that kind of thing. So you, have you been have you been following? This story on no, TV. No, garbage in, oh. garbage out. Uh, take yeah. it in. You know what? I have enough going on. I don't yep. watch the news. Well, <laughs> you're probably smart because I spent most of last night in tears as I watched these families who were destroyed and then their friends and then the country. It's This is part of the problem, though, I think. Being being exposed to so much horror, it, it normalizes it. It does. It, it exhausts you to the point where, oh, I, I can't watch it. I can't because the reaction is so powerful and so enervating. I have I don't I don't have the resources to deal with these national 
and international tragedies. I, I don't have the resources to deal with Puerto Rico. I don't have the resources to deal with Mexico. The emotional resources. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So much emotionally. And then you have required. life. I you think have, of the laundry done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, what's my responsibility in the world? Uh -huh. Or, right. you know, imagine losing two of your family members while this is going on peripherally, and you have mm -hmm. to divide your time between your personal loss, the country's loss, the world's mm -hmm. loss. You know, Layers. we need to be focused on our own little spaces so we can mm -hmm. heal those first. Right. Okay, I, this is getting too depressing. We <laughs> have move to move on. on to something a little bit more cheerful. Like uh, last month, I talked about my nephew's book, Thanks Obama, and um, I gave all of you girls a copy of it, but it was just the other day, so you haven't finished reading it yet, but it's doing very well. I'm very excited. That's, That's my good. one thing I wanted to say. My other thing I wanted to say is a couple months ago, I talked about my Beach Park reunion of all the people I hadn't seen in 50 years. Yeah, how much fun. Uh, it was so much fun, but you know what else it did, um, especially because of all of the horrible things going on in the world? It made me really realize how you need to reach out to people that, not just that you love right now, but that you've mm -hmm. loved over the years because boy did we have a good time and it was just so special that's great so mm -hmm. special how how's your month been um well it's been okay and i you know i i have a theory i share this theory that with you having fun um that we, we all need to have a lot of fun we all need to have more fun when we can there's not enough fun and so um i suppose i should be saying my early new year's resolution would be to have more fun okay than I do. so so with that said this wasn't the I'm most in. fun month but um but i will be going up to honk fest this weekend which is one of my favorite Hi. things of the year and it's a uh, um, it's street bands in Cambridge, and hundreds of them get together, and they perform all over the city, and it's a big party, and there are thousands of folks, and there's you know there's artists, and there's artisans, and there's um, all kinds of food from all over the world, and 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 just bands everywhere, and it's the you know a How great fun. yeah great. Weekend. that's this weekend that's this weekend I go we go every year, and I go with a, a group of friends and. It's always very celebratory, and so I guess my point is that the week, the, the month hasn't been that exciting, but it's about to be really exciting. Uh, right, so. oh, good. that's <laughs> yeah. really happy things. Good, you'll have to tell us about next yeah. month. So I've been kind of excited because October is my month to plan. I, I'm a business planner. I, I think we started last month, last year with that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I like to figure out 2018, and what I mean by that, ladies, is I plan every trip I'm going to go on, so I know how much money I need to make so I can afford those trips. <laughs> I like the you know, way you think. I, yeah, I, I plan um, occasions, things that I'm going to participate in. I plan those. I send my donation checks in for various places, that my charitable places, and I plan that. I, I budget for it. I figure it out. So I guess I'd love to invite the... Uh, our listeners, our, our TV viewers to start to get a 2018 calendar and start scratching out what they really want to do because time ticks. And if you don't start oh, making a plan idea. about where you want to be, you go, shucks, I missed it because opportunity's knocking. So October mm -hmm. is my month to really figure out. I'm going to Croatia mm -hmm. in April. Very excited. Uh -huh. We're bicycling. Croatia, which is, by the way, very hilly. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can so do it. I can do it. I'm excited. So that's happening. Uh, the other thing is, real estate is crazy right now. It on is Cape Cod. Yeah, yeah. there's so much buyer confidence, but there's very little inventory. So I'm just going to encourage anyone who's thinking about selling that this is a great time to get the best dollar for your house because supply versus demand theory comes into play. Mm. Don't let, oh, spring or summer are the best. Uh -uh, not anymore. Fall is an right awesome now, time huh? wow. because there's no inventory. The people with the thinking that spring and summer is the best time have taken their houses off the market, leaving it wide open for new inventory to shine. Mm. So yeah. that's the other thing. And this weekend, I'm going up to Burlington to marry a young man who I helped raise, and it's so oh, exciting. Oh, exciting. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. say it. I'm going to officiate the wedding of uh, a young man who I uh, helped raise. That's so true. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing. <laughs> the importance really, of grammatical <laughs> construction. <Yes. laughs> so it's such an honor to be the officiant. And, uh, and he's very funny. He says, my, gr my girlfriend Annie's marrying me. But he's actually marrying Kate, but I'm going to be there. So. That's great. Oh, it's happy really fun. Fun. What a great happy mm -hmm. job. That yeah. Happy job, yeah. Huh. yeah. So part of my plan is how many weddings are, am I going to allow in next year that I'm going to participate in? And how many house sales do I need to make my life hmm. abundant? Mm. 
We'll get back to that word. Christine, mm -hmm. I'm going to save you for a minute because I just want to go for one second to the Munkus Cafe where we're going to, where we have filmed actually, a live segment. Oh, wonderful. And um, you may wonder how the Munkus Cafe has anything to do with Breast and Ovarian Awareness Month, but unfortunately the owner of Munkus had passed away of cancer and another beloved person there also passed away. So um, we want to think about them and we want to just keep the Munica's Cafe going because it's a sure popular place. So we'll be back in one minute. We're at the Munica's Cafe, a beloved breakfast and lunch restaurant in East Falmouth. We're going to be talking to Dave Souza, owner of the restaurant. His wife, Karen, bought the restaurant a couple of years ago. Sadly, she and beloved waitress, Linda, passed away about a year ago from cancer. But Dave has continued the restaurant, and it's just as delicious as ever. Souza, and I am the owner of uh, Monica's Cafe. Uh, some of my favorite food items for breakfast uh, would certainly be the pancakes, the corned beef hash, and the cinnamon roll French toast. The lemon ricotta pancakes and the pumpkin nut pancakes, uh, as well as the fresh blueberry pancakes, are all offered seasonally at different times of the year. And, uh, Customers seem to like that. Some of them would prefer that they were on the menu year-round, but they like to mix it up. So the Rock Garden Outside uh, is part of what's called, uh, what's known as the Kindness Project, which was started by Megan Murphy. Um, I'm sure quite a few people are probably familiar with it. So it's just uh, uh, people paint or write uh, messages or little inspirational quotes or uh, just little uh, gestures of kindness to, to share, with, share with others and take a rock or leave a rock or, uh, or just take a rock if you prefer or just leave a rock, whichever. Uh, it's just kind of a nice way for people to interact. Probably one of the most rewarding parts about uh, owning and running the restaurant is that I have the most uh, loyal, friendly, and hardworking staff that uh, that anyone could ask for. They really pour their heart and soul into it and care about the customer's happiness. And um, my customers are, as well, are some of the nicest and friendliest people that I've ever dealt with. So, yeah, great staff and great customers. It's a recipe for success. So in the future, we'd just like to uh, go over some menu items, offer some new selections for the winter and next spring and summer, and uh, continue working on sprucing the place up. We're going to get new tables and chairs and uh, some other things to uh, work on uh, spruce, sprucing things up here at the restaurant. are open year-round, uh, seven days a week. We serve breakfast all day, and we serve lunch as well, Monday through Saturday, from uh, our hours are 6.30 to 1.30, and then we do breakfast only on Sunday from 6.30 to till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yum, thinking mm -hmm. about those Pancakes. <laughs> me. I feel the hips. Oh, they do. In the summer, they do the lemon ricotta pancakes. Mm, yeah. Is there anything better than their butter? Oh, I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going on a trip in a couple of weeks myself, so I'm trying not to do butter. Good luck. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying not to drink wine, which is working. Christine. <laughs> Breast and, aware, and Ovarian Awareness Month touched you, touches mm -hmm. you. Want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, I, had, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2001. Um, you were how old? I was 34. I Ooh. was a single mom of a six-year-old daughter, um, newly divorced. Um, it was terrifying. I never should have gotten cancer. There was no history in my family. No. I had a healthy lifestyle. I breastfed my daughter until she was almost three. I had no, there was no marker. No, no And condition. you were too young to have even had a mammogram. I was. Right? I was. Right. In fact, when I told my, my OBGYN about 
the lump that I'd found, she said, oh, you're so young, we could wait six months. Mm. And, um, and I did wait a little, a little while. Um, I waited about four months because I felt it at the, right before the holidays, like, oh, I'll deal with this after Christmas. And um, I finally had a mammogram in February. And um, the news was bad. And I had, two weeks later, I had a, a radical mastectomy. And on April 1st in 2001, I started chemotherapy. Mm. And then I was lucky enough to get into a clinical trial for Herceptin, which is a, a smart drug, um, which was uh, sort of groundbreaking at the time. It, uh, they halted that trial early because it cut um, recurrence rates in half. Uh -huh. um, and I was very fortunate to be part of the trial through Dana-Farber, uh -huh. um, for which I'm participating in a benefit on Saturday night. Yes, <gasps> you are. That's right. Yes, yes you so are. Yes, yeah. laughing for a cure. Laughing for a cure. Mm -hmm. Now, I am very happy to have a very special guest on the show today who has, um, how shall we say, started Laughing for a Cure mm -hmm. and started Dancing for a Cure. Her name is Susan Friedman, and she'll be with us when we get back. Thanks. Susan Friedman, besides being a um, amazing organizer of events, I also took tap dancing class from Susan. I'm not going to demonstrate what I <laughs> learned today because she asked me not to go on to the next level. Not true. Give it up. Very very talented. Susan, um, this Saturday, and I know that the show will have shown already by the time this is over, but I have tickets for something called Laughing for a Cure, which is comprised of a bunch of comedians and then a very well-known person from the Ketua Center, yes. our special <laughs> fat ass cancer bitch. And um, can you just give us a brief talk about that and then talk about your upcoming sure. February event sure. and talk about how you got involved in Brief? this and we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we might, we might ask you questions. <laughs> okay, so Laughing for a Cure is actually one of the first events that doesn't have to do with dance. Our organization Dancing for a Cure, obviously our events um, were always in some way involved with dance. So as they say, things are, you know, happen for a reason. I met this this woman on a train, a commuter train into New York City, and she was um, turned out to be a stand-up comic and said she'd never visited the Cape, and then the wheels started turning in my head, and the seed and was planted, the and by yep. the time I got to the platform at Grand Central Station, I already envisioned having having a show with her um, on the Cape. So it just evolved from there, and she That's was really fun. She cool. was wonderful. I love that story. Yeah, <laughs> and so there's an old Yiddish word called beshert, and that's what I feel like it is. You will Happens relate for to a that. Reason. Happens yeah. everything is meant to be. And um, I think that the fact that she missed her train and went on that train and I sat next to her, it was just sort of meant to be. Kismet. And so, yeah, and so then Miss Christine here, um, she, we involved her, which I was so pleased about. And so this is going to be at the Double Tree on Saturday night. Great. I have my tickets. Yes, and um, we're hoping it's going to be a sellout crowd. And I think we all need a good laugh oh, around absolutely. now. Absolutely. So it should be great. And all our funds do go to a special fund at uh, Dana-Farber for research of breast and ovarian cancer. Well, tell me about the Dancing for a Cure. Okay. How did you ever start doing that? Well, um, in 2006, my best friend of 40 years, Karen Sheck, was diagnosed with stage 3 ovarian cancer. She was in New York, and I was on the Cape. I had no experience with fundraising, development, anything like that. I did have many personal experiences with cancer. My father had died. Um, when I was just 15 months old. And so, um, you know, I had lived with that big C um, all my life. But now it, it touched someone who I had been very, very close to for 40 years. She, she and I were soulmates, you know, one of those college roommates, and just it kept going and going. Yes. And so I 
I felt helpless. What can I do? You know, what can I do besides be on the phone with her and listen to her and talk to her? So um, I had a rather large studio in Hyannis, and I just put up a little sign up on the bulletin board, anybody interested in doing a fundraiser? And people kind of came out of the woodwork. Uh, 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 one of the moms just had a sister who had died of ovarian cancer. There were three women at the time undergoing treatment for breast cancer. So it became um, a breast and ovarian cancer um, event and we had a, a holiday show in this 25 by 50 studio. We packed mm -hmm. in 100 people. Uh -huh. What year was this? This was 2006. Okay. And so we had a holiday performance with Nutcracker dances and we brought performers in from the Cape and we made it sort of a variety show but the emphasis was on dance. And it grew each year. The first year we made $7,000 with three shows. And each year it grew bigger and bigger until we finally had to take it out of my little studio uh -huh. at, to the um, Barnstable High School Performing Arts Center. And then it became really big. So we were then making $50,000 a weekend. And it grew and grew and grew. Oh, wonderful. And at this point, we're at about $375,000 that we've raised. That's amazing. And so getting back to Laughing for a Cure. Yes. So this is the first one that is not really dance related. And I can finally say, get rid of your dancing shoes and come and just laugh. So anyway, to get back to Dancing for a Cure, um, we continued to raise money every year, as I said, and I got more and more involved with it. I, I became a member of um, the board, Friends of Dana-Farber, in Boston, and got very involved with Dana-Farber, which I adore. Oh, right. and, and Christine can attest to the unbelievable things that are done there. Um, you know, if you're unfortunate enough to be diagnosed with cancer, you're fortunate enough to have that facility in Boston. It really is just, by, sure. it, and everything they say about it is true. From the moment you drive in to the person who opens the door for you to come in, you just, you don't feel like it's a hospital. You don't, you, you know that everyone around you is just opening their arms to you. On your team. Right. On your team. On your team. So um, I've been very involved with that. And um, unfortunately, Karen um, passed away eight years later. She gave it a really good fight. She lasted mm -hmm. a lot longer than most with stage three That's ovarian cancer. Sure. Yeah. And I've gotten very involved with other organizations here on the Cape who are, are also fundraising for, for similar things. And um, it's been this cancer journey that I'm on. I, I feel I've, I've met incredible people. One is sitting right here. And and it just takes you in amazing places and it really in some ways really enriches your life. I'm mm. sure that um, it does. It's really true. So I'm I promised Karen before she died that I would not give up and I haven't because it's she died um, almost six years ago now. And so um, Let me, I know yeah. you have not yet invited me to dance in the show. What's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, but I would like to know how, who dances in okay. the show, how okay. they get to okay. do that, so, and then I'll be ready. Sure. Well, the holiday performance actually is, does no, no longer happens because um, at the time I owned Dance Designs in Hyannis, and, and that was really the engine that ran that show. And so since I sold the studio in 2012, um, I've just continued with our other fundraiser, which was our Dance Marathon, which is one of my most favorite nights of the year because it is... It is based on the old-fashioned dance marathon where, mm -hmm. you know, people have the numbers and they dance oh, until they drop. But we only have, we say, four hours. Um, you get a number, you get a prize for fun. different things. And we pull together the community to come. It's at um, Mashpee High School. And oh, cool. we dance for four hours. It also has... Um, different performances every 20 minutes somebody else is performing so people get a break they don't want to don't want to dance and you don't have to dance at the marathon I, I want to make that really clear you don't have to go and dance if you want to be an observer why did you look at me uh, well <laughs> I'm looking at everybody no but, you do, but I don't want to I don't want to scare people off and think that they have to dance okay. for four hours they don't Okay. Most people do. The music is fabulous. We have great DJ who devotes his time at, uh, for four hours and and all different genres of music. And I know when I was talking about the Moon Kiss Cafe to you the other yes. day, you told me there was a connection yes. with that and the dancing. There is, there is. Um, because Dancing for a Cure has been here on the Cape for 11 years now, I think we really do have a lot of people who know about us and we, we've sort of you know been connected in a lot of ways to a lot of people. Linda Ball was one of the people who um, had been 
connected to the marathon. She was um, ill, I, I think it was her third time that she was undergoing treatment for cancer. And the she was marathon, working at Munichis. She was working at Munichis and um, she also taught yoga at Blast Fitness. And so the folks, the ladies at Blast Fitness put together a team, which we do for the marathon, in her honor. And they were called the Ballerinas, oh, and um, for <laughs> Linda Ball. Yeah. And and the marathon welcomes people who want to put together teams in honor of somebody. And we take a moment during the four hours oh. to talk about that person. They get to dedicate a song for that person, mm -hmm. and it's really very touching. So I we bet. usually have six or seven different teams that are there, and um, it's a really, really just fun, fun, fun night. It's a family yeah, night. Kids of all ages come. People, I've had dancers as old as 80s. I'm not looking at you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but we have the Cape Cod Kickers. The Cape Cod Kickers will be there again this year. That's a group of like, I don't know, 30 country line type of oh, dancers. Nice. And they come um, ballroom dancers, Irish step dancers, all different types of dance. Great. And so we really try to encourage everybody. We have. Um, the kids from um, the Riverview School who come in, Community Connections come, they do a little what performance. Time of year? This is going to be February 10th. Can I give it a plug? Yes, I want you to give it a plug. Feb I want a poster. Feb Feb February 10th at Mashpee High School from 5 to 9. We have refreshments, t shirts, um, sure. things like that. And um, it is just such a fun, fun night. And um, like I said, if you want to dance for four hours, you can to oldies and to pop music Sounds and like to blast. swing music we and all kinds of things. We should or do you it as can a team. Sing. <laughs> you can have a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. You can have a team. You yeah, can I have a team. Mm -hmm. You can have a team. So um, yeah, so that yeah. that's going to be great. And we're just um, looking forward to having. You know, we have a snow date. Um, oh because, yeah. Yeah, because um, it's February. Yeah. And um, last year was kind of interesting because it was Super Bowl weekend, and the mm. New England Patriots cheerleaders were supposed to come because we oftentimes have celebrities. This year, the ball ballerina will be there, Maggie oh. Kadurka. Oh. But last year, it was either having the Patriots cheerleaders or going to the Super Bowl. So I, being a big Patriot fan, decided I would give up the cheerleaders and let them go to the Super Bowl. Oh, that was nice of you. Very nice of you. Um, yes, yes, yes. You know, yes. Tom Brady called me and he said to make sure to thank you once again. Well, this year I did it the week after the Super okay, Bowl, good. so we're all set. Good, but we had a good. pep rally and it was fabulous. You know, you mentioned the bald ballerina. Yes. Do you know who mm -hmm. she is? Susan was telling me about her when we had lunch the other day. Just yeah. a quick... Oh, yeah. Fabulous, quick. fabulous woman. Um, her name is Maggie Kudurker and she was diagnosed diagnosed with stage three metastatic breast cancer, which at the age of 23, she was also a uh, mm. dancer with the Joffrey Ballet in wow. New York. And age 23, who is thinking, like you, Christine, who's thinking at this <laughs> age, you know, she thought she had pulled a muscle in her sternum. Anyway, it turns out that she had metastatic breast cancer, which is a diagnosis that more young women get and is also not that well funded in terms of the whole spectrum of different types of uh, breast cancer. And so she just took the bull by the horns and um, just, you know, she lost her hair, she had a double mastectomy, did not have reconstruction, continues to be a dancer, a teacher, performer. And I got connected with her online. I read her story. Her picture's in back of us, so I think that oh, is great. Be really interesting. Fabulous. So I just yeah. reached out to her and said, you know, here on the Cape, we're thinking of you, we're pulling from you, we're an organization that deals with dance, and we just started talking, and then she had never been to the Cape. And no. so oh, this great. is like, this is, this, is my, yeah. this is my hook all the time. Yeah. And so I invited her to come. Um, and she does master classes at Turning Point in Falmouth. And then she agreed to come to the marathon with her good friend, uh, Adrian Canturner, mm -hmm. who is a very well-known dancer. Right. And they performed their world premiere, No One Can Survive Alone. It wasn't a dry eye at the oh. marathon. Oh. Anyway, Maggie is doing oh. fabulously. She is now okay. three years, um, she's still in treatment and will be, uh, as she calls herself, terminal. And she will forever be in treatment because she needs to be mm -hmm. until they find a cure. And she's coming again this year. 
Nice. So we are thrilled, and yeah. she'll be teaching master classes again. And she's just she's a radiant light. She's just oh. she's you meet her, and you just cannot believe her story. Number one, sure. her hair has grown back uh -huh. at this point. Mm -hmm. She's just amazing. That's she's great. just she's an inspiration to everybody who oh. meets her. So we're thrilled to have her again. That's exciting. You are an inspiration to me oh. because I think that it is fabulous no, that you took you. something that happened to you in your life that was so sad and so important and look what you've done. Thank you. What Thank a legacy you. for your yeah. girlfriend. Karen would really be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Just beautiful. Proud, yeah. Proud, proud, proud. Yep. Thank you for oh, joining us. Oh, you are us. so I, welcome. I appreciate it. I, I hope everybody comes to the marathon. Mm -hmm. Sounds oh, fun. Yeah, sounds and I terrific. thank Christine for being so involved. It's been a it's been a so joy I can't to have to her. See uh -oh. that. Okay, cool. yeah. mm -hmm. So again, we've talked about a lot of sad things today and mm -hmm. a lot of positive, I think happy, happy things. things. Mm -hmm. So our next show in November, you know, Thanksgiving, the theme is abundance. And Christine is going to tell you how we got the idea, the word for a bun, <laughs> or at least give a little, little right. intro, and then we'll show them next time. All right. Um, it's through our, our writing class, which is Story Morning Glory, that I teach every damn Saturday. I could do it Saturday. <laughs> Nine o'clock in the morning. It's never not awesome. It's a group of anywhere from five to a dozen smart, funny women our age. I take it. Who, who <laughs> write and share their story. And there's one regular who comes, Pam, who um, invented a dance to help I her daughter her do oh, right, right. Right. exam time right, right. Um, when she was a little girl. And so when her, when her daughter was struggling or worried, said, don't worry about it, we're going to do the bun dance, a bun dance. And it's a special, good luck, get your mojo on, feel awesome, clap your hands, turn around little thing that we often do in writing class. And so then she realized, abundance, abundance, Thanksgiving. Perfect. We'll see you then. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great fall.